My name is John Barron. I am the Director of Operations with Brilliant Labs, as well as the Provincial Lead for Newfoundland and Labrador. And I'm very pleased to welcome you to today's speaker series. Just off the top, this session is now being recorded. So any of you who do not want to be recorded on camera, please turn your cameras off now um, and be aware of that. <clears throat> we are very pleased to welcome uh, Jason Myers, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Next Generation Manufacturing Canada, which is Canada's advanced manufacturing supercluster, an initiative funded by the Government of Canada that will leverage more than $500 million over the next three years in collaborative industry-led projects aimed at building world-leading advanced manufacturing capabilities in Canada. He is an award-winning business economist who specializes in industrial and technological change. Between 2007 and 2016, he served as president and CEO of Canadian Manufacturers and Exporters, Canada's largest industry and trade association. He has been widely recognized as one of the most influential economic policy advocates in Canada. He is an advisor to both private and public sector leaders and has counseled Canadian prime ministers and premiers, as well as senior corporate executives and policymakers around the world. He is currently a member of the advisory board of the World Manufacturing Forum and a leading advocate on the world stage on behalf of advanced manufacturing in Canada. So please, all of you, join me in welcoming Jay Myers. Thanks very much, uh, John. It's great to be here and, uh, and uh, with your colleagues and, uh, and students across Atlantic Canada. So Jay, uh, tell us a little bit about what, uh, what you do on, uh, on a daily basis sort of thing. <laughs> so, uh, NGEN, uh, Next Generation Manufacturing Canada, is all about trying to connect all of Canada's great research potential, our technology companies and our technology strengths, and manufacturers across Canada, many of which are world-leading companies, uh, bringing them together to develop really unique solutions that are going to solve some of the biggest problems we face, like how do we how do we begin to tackle climate change? How do we tackle and fight not only the pandemic, but how do we improve healthcare uh, for Canadians um, and for the world at large? How do we secure our supply chains or, or how do we uh, ensure that we have adequate supply of food and fresh drinking water? All of these are, are big social problems, not only for Canada, but, uh, but around the world. And manufacturing, uh, those companies that can actually make things, can bring technologies to market to solve some of those issues, uh, are going to be at the forefront of our future, not only in terms of economic development, but so important uh, for, uh, for solving these problems. I think Canada has a great role to play. If we can let take leverage all these strengths, you know, bring all these strengths together, and that's what we do. We, we, uh, look to bring researchers and tech companies and manufacturers together uh, to do really unique things. And uh, I'll maybe have a chance to talk about some of those projects in, uh, in a few minutes uh, there. But it's exciting work. And um, uh, a large part of what we're trying to do too is, is build the workforce of the future, uh, not just to take a look at where, where we have shortages today in terms of skills, but what is the workforce going to be look like what do we have to prepare for five years down the road and that's why it's so important for me today to talk to everybody uh, and especially uh, uh, students because you're going to be the workforce of the future and uh, I guess my my key uh, message is uh, take a look at advanced manufacturing because it, it is so important in making a difference in the world excellent um, so if anyone has any questions, any burning questions, uh, you can pop them in the public chat. You can put your hand up. You can ask questions as you want to. Alicia will be moderating that stuff. So if you have any questions that you'd like to ask of Jay, as we're moving through this conversation today, please do not hesitate to ask. So there is an urgent need to secure a greener future while addressing the growing demand for skilled workers to fill jobs in advanced manufacturing because that's one of the things i mean we, we saw when the pandemic started the whole manufacturing trying to get even um ppe done here in canada it was a tough slog at the beginning to try to, to manufacture this year um so why did you launch the careers of the future campaign and given our experiences over the last couple of years what do you hope to accomplish yeah you know for anybody today, I, I, if you go to the store, uh, you'll see shortages in the shelves. Anybody looking to buy a car, 
uh, today is going to be faced with some pretty hefty prices and, and uh, uh, for used cars as well as new cars. Uh, PPE was a really good example. When the pandemic hit, we found out we just didn't make things in Canada. And, you know, making things here is so important. And, and maybe it takes a crisis like we've seen over the last couple of years and continue to see in terms of all the supply chain disruptions. We need to make things here, uh, but we're not going to make everything here. Uh, but we can make things that make a huge difference in, in the world. And so when it comes to, you're mentioning, John, the, you know, a, a greener economy, well, it's going to be the technologies and the way that the products are manufactured here in Canada. We have a great advantage in terms of our clean energy. Uh, and, and we have a great advantage in terms of being able to use our, our research strengths, the, the innovation strengths we have here, the technologies, not only to bring these technologies to the marketplace, but actually use them here in manufacturing in Canada to make an impact. Uh, in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions or finding substitutes for non-reusable plastics, for instance, or reducing the waste we see, you know, in the, in the agri-food uh, sector, 80% of the food that is raised in Canada is wasted. It doesn't make it to our tables and it's wasted along the, uh, along the way. So how can we, how can we reinvent that entire food value chain to uh, reduce a lot of that waste and and that depends on being able to manufacture new products and and to use some of that the waste as as feedstock in new products for instance the the pandemic has shown you know again the the real importance of being able to manufacture not only ppe which is frankly something that we should have continued to manufacture here but things like vaccines and test kits and, and other therapeutics that we need. And we have the capability to do that. Uh, we have the manufacturing capacity. We also have the technology and the research. We've got some of the best tech research and the tech in the world uh, here. So what we're trying to do is make a difference in, in terms of being able to, to bring those products to market, manufacture them here in Canada, and, uh, and frankly, to sell them to the rest of the world. But I tell you, we've got we've got some big challenges, and supply chain challenges are are one thing. But let's look at the talent pipeline. Let's look at the talent supply chain, the knowledge supply chain, and and there are some big challenges there too, because we're most of the people in manufacturing, not most, but uh, everybody's aging. Uh, here, look at me. Uh, but you know, we've got a quarter of the entire workforce in manufacturing in Canada, a quarter of the people who make things here are going to be retired in the next 10 years. And we know that because they're over 55. Uh, young people coming into the sector are, you know, there are a lot of them, but not as many as are being reti are retired. So we've got two things going on. We need to focus on innovation, focus on, you know, using tech uh, to develop new products and, and better ways of making things. But we also know that there are going to be fewer people working in the sector and that companies across the country are going to become more highly automated. And that means that the, the skills levels of people working in manufacturing are going to be at a higher level as well. And so data, not only data skills and digital skills, and that's going to be really important, but employability skills and people who are interested in making things. Uh, because you can, you, everybody, you know, I, I don't have to tell anybody on this uh, in this uh, uh, this webinar. Uh, there, we've got fantastic digital skills across the country. The issue is how do you use those? How do you apply things? And our, our major message is look at applying them in careers in advanced manufacturing, because that's really where you're going to make a difference in the world. Uh, here, it's really going to be how we how and what types of products and technologies we can bring to market to cert, to basically solve some help solve some of these big challenges uh, that we face and that's a major message we wanted to get out in our careers of the future campaign uh, here you know absolutely think of a career in advanced manufacturing and the other message is it's not just all about tech uh, advanced manufacturing is is it, it, the, the careers are open all over the place uh, it's about sales and marketing and management and HR, it's about economics, of all places. It's about law, it's about, uh, uh, it is about tech and it's about trades and, and skilled trades. But 
there are careers right across the board here in, in advanced manufacturing and companies are crying out for, uh, for people who are interested in working in the sector, who have the appropriate skills and, and uh, you know, who have the basic employability skills as well, who can, people who can solve problems and work in teams and take responsibility for themselves and their, their colleagues at work. So high level of skill uh, requirements, but the, the most important thing is think of manufacturing, think of advanced manufacturing as a, as a career choice for the future because there are huge opportunities there. And look, and you know, a lot of people ask me what manufacturing is all about. Well, manufacturing is just making things. Uh, here and advanced manufacturing is making things with some of the best technologies and the newest technologies in the world. But it's all up to people. It's how people work that, that really is it gives manufacturing its strength uh, here in Canada, but but anywhere. And we've got the right workforce here. Uh, we just need to make sure that we've got we've got the talent to come into these career opportunities going forward. And look, it, you know, as for students. If you like making things, if you like crafts, if you like art, if you like like basically handicrafts, well, you're already manufacturers. Uh, if you like fixing things, if you like tinkering around with you know cars or or tinkering around with equipment, or or just fixing things, you're already in manufacturing. And if you like playing games, well, come and play games in manufacturing because it's all about AR and VR uh, and and virtual virtual processes, virtual modeling. Uh, that's where the future of the industry is going. If you like art and design, well, think of manufacturing. And, and by the way, most, uh, most of the positions open today in product development and product design uh, in manufacturing are actually filled by women. So the opportunities are, are, are there and it's, it's really a, a very exciting sector to work in today, particularly with the changes in in technology going on, but I think Canada has a has a great opportunity to really make a mark in, in the world. And um, you know, it's important for students who are going to be the next generation workforce to think about possible careers in uh, in the sector. And I I encourage everybody to do that. So that's what we're trying to achieve in careers of the future. And you've got the right audience here because we are an audience of makers because that's what one of the things that Brilliant Labs does a lot of is digital Absolutely. making and making and working with students to create things and, and work with them on, on the development of skills. So we, you've talked a lot about employability skills, but what are things that, that maybe students could do to prepare now to, to move into a pathway that could lead into manufacturing? What are some of the things they should be looking at in school? Some of the, uh, some of the things they should be trying to take or, or engage with? Well, I, I think we're, you know, being able to engage in working uh, in maker spaces is a great, uh, a great start. Uh, clearly, you know, I, I think whatever uh, job is, is going to be open in the future and, and probably lots of different jobs and in, uh, in a career going forward, it's going to uh, require employees to be up to speed in terms of their ability to understand data, uh, to use digital uh, digital technologies and digital tools. So that's all important. Uh, but you know, most more and more companies are are when they're looking out to bring in new employees, what they're looking for are people who have responsibility, who can work in teams, who can solve problems. Who can take instruction, but also because a lot of you know, in manufacturing uh, and and working with technology, there are health and safety concerns. So being able to follow instructions is very important. But also take a look at how to improve things because everything is about innovation today. So how do you, not only how do you solve problems, but how do you continually look at improving what you're doing? So those are some really basic uh, uh, skills that uh, that I think you know. Students, whether it's in a career in advanced manufacturing or not, uh, those are good schools or the good skills for for anyone to uh, to develop if they're looking for a career in the future. But you know, it, the other thing is, and in in, uh, in in manufacturing, is being able to follow a study path that will get you into a particular a particular career or a particular job in advanced manufacturing. But I can tell you, know, like I can tell you when I was in, when I was in high school, I had absolutely no idea of what 
that my career path was going to look like. Uh, but I can tell you what I what I tried to do was was make sure that I had a, a wide variety of skills and always take a look at the at the position that you're in right now as a platform for doing something better. And I think that's that's true today, even as as people progress through a career in advanced manufacturing, uh, because the career never stops. The career is always open uh, and it's always about continuous learning and it's all about trying to bring the skills together that will that will help to uh, advance your career. But I can tell you one thing if you know, and, and I think this is where uh, advanced manufacturing also is very important uh, because of the nature of the careers and because uh, you know, you can build a career on the basis of your current interests. If you're, you know, if you're interested in oceans, you can, you can create a, a, a career in advanced manufacturing uh, focusing on oceans. If you're, if you're interested in IT, the same thing. If you're interested in healthcare, well, you know, take a look at some, what some of the companies across the, uh, across the country are doing to build new medical devices or use, use additive technologies in order to develop even even organs and, and blood flow. This is, this is all being done today here in Canada. And it's, a, it's so exciting. Uh, but, you know, those are, the, those are some of the areas you can, you can be a part of. But it, it really begins, I guess, first of all, you know, understand what some of these opportunities are and, and, uh, and, and work toward a, a study path, work toward a, a career path that, um, that as a student interests you. And I can tell you, um, you know, not all careers are like this, but for, for, uh, for students today, looking at making a difference in the, in the future, being able to come into advanced manufacturing, construct a, a career based on your capabilities where you're making a difference. You know, that we used to talk about jobs in, in the past. You know, we're talking about careers now because it's really an extension of what you want to do as a, uh, as as a person and as an individual, and I think that's that's so so important today. And technology is allowing that. Um, but you know, get informed. Take a look at our careers of the future site. Get a an idea of some of the the jobs that are out there. Take a look at some of the people uh, across the country who are who are filling those jobs and listen to them in terms of what the impact that they think that they are having uh, here in solving some of the world's biggest problems too. And I think. You know, uh, again, that's that's why we wanted to put the site together, really to inspire uh, young people in thinking about uh, about advanced manufacturing. Maybe say one other thing, which is laughable. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people who wring their hands and and think that young people today need to learn more about digital skills. And uh, sure, everybody needs a um, gr good grounding in digital skills and, and data. Uh, but I keep assuring everybody uh, who I meet that um, young people have tremendous digital skills, and it's usually the people who don't, the older people who who are concerned about <laughs> the capabilities of young people to work with technology. That's not the issue. The issue is use those skills to make a difference in manufacturing because it's it's our ability to make things that creates the value and and actually solves these these problems in the world. And that's, uh, uh, that's the key message that we want to get across. Oh, absolutely. And, and a lot of what you said is, is, is resonating with workers here in Newfoundland Labrador. Granville Medical is a company that was started here in Newfoundland that is doing some 3D printing of skin. We have uh, PolyUnity that's doing 3D oh, yeah. printing of, of PPE here in the province that uh, we actually work with at the, here in Brilliant Labs, Newfoundland Labrador at the beginning of the pandemic. We actually worked with them for a while and Wiley who's on this call was, was a volunteer with them for a while. So we see the, those things happening. Um, so you talked about all this variety of different career choices. So, um, Effectively, you're saying follow follow a career path that you are interested in, and it could lead you to manufacturing. Is that what you, essentially what you're trying to to say? That if you're interested in becoming an engineer, become an engineer, but be aware that there's a lot of opportunities in manufacturing. Is that yeah, I, absolutely. Um, you know, it, follow a career in uh, in IT. Follow a career in skilled trades. Follow a career in art. Uh, follow a career in uh, in engineering. 
but just realize that there are op career opportunities in all of those fields in advanced manufacturing. And and I, I think today one of the, you know, one of the perceptions that's, you know, that is far too common across the country is that manufacturing is, you know, sort of old smokestack industry. It's it's dirty, it's boring work, it's repetitive work, it's assembly line work. Uh, and today, where the sector is going, and particularly uh, companies that are using robotics and automation systems and, and 3D printing systems, and uh, it, it's, it's a digital, uh, it's a high tech industry. And uh, we've got a, we've got a, a really neat project in, uh, in, in maybe John, if you don't mind, <laughs> just talk about this project because it's, it's kind of neat. Um, and it's in Southern Ontario and it's a combination of uh, equipment manufacturers, IOT companies, uh, artificial intelligence companies and biologic company. And they've come together to build the world's largest facility to create uh, high quality proteins from crickets and cricket poop. And this is, it's world leading. Uh, it's just been named uh, by UNESCO as one of the top 10 applications of artificial intelligence in the world uh, to achieve uh, the UN sustainable development goals. And this facility uh, won't have anybody working in it. It's gonna be a totally automated, totally lights out facility. But the companies that have come together to build it are hiring 1,700 people with digital skills and skills in, bi uh, in biology, skills in marketing, and skills in, um, in uh, automation and trades, uh, as, well as, uh, as well as robotics and, and data analysis. Uh, those are the jobs there that support this facility. So you don't necessarily, uh, in, in advanced manufacturing today, you're not necessarily working on the shop floor. Uh, many, there are many careers and many jobs that will still be on the shop floor, but I can guarantee all of them will be high tech jobs in the future. They're going to be jobs that are, are maintaining and driving and, and working with, with a much higher degree of automation. And I think that's a really good example of a, of a company because a lot of people say, say today, well, automation is just replacing jobs. It may be replacing tasks. Uh, but here's a good example of a totally automated company that's still hiring 1,700 people, but it, they're not 1,700 people to actually, you know, raise crickets. They're 1,700 people to work uh, in automation systems and to maintain that and then to sell this product around the world. No, and that, and that was leading into another question I had because I, I know that, well, Newfoundland traditionally... Newfoundlanders have a tendency to move away from the province to 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 leave the province to do manufacturing. We've been, we've been in mines across the country, we've been major manufacturing centers across the country, and we keep doing that. We we built buildings in New York, and so I was hoping that that you could elaborate a little bit more. Well, but I think you did. But about how we could digitally commute to these, that we could live in a place like Newfoundland and still do the jobs in advanced manufacturing without having to leave here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and you know. <laughs> Uh, in Newfoundland, as you were saying, John, I have some amazing tech companies, uh, robotics companies that are not only manufacturing things, but are are now servicing employee or servicing their customers around the world from Newfoundland. Uh, they've uh, got um, healthcare companies, medical device companies, but more and more of this is being done digitally, and so you don't need to be uh, in manufacturing isn't necessarily uh, uh, all today uh, based on people coming together to make things. It's more and more of it is automated, more and more of it is digital. And as you say, you can, you can be a part of advanced manufacturing and the, that kind of value chain around some of these products that are being developed uh, based in Newfoundland and still be a very important part of the, that uh, of, of a manufacturing process that is uh, could be anywhere in the world and, and preferably here in Canada somewhere. Absolutely. Um, Mary put in a comment earlier, and I think it's something I'd like to 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 broach here as well is she she talks about how much of what we're talking about falls back on education 
and that innovation that we're trying to encourage happening in classroom, that engagement innovation sort of activity. So what sort of advice could you give to people like us? Because one of the things Brilliant Labs tries to do is tries to help teachers bring those innovations into the classroom. What kind of advice could you give to groups like us that are trying to, to stir that innovation in classrooms? Well, I, you know, I, I guess uh, it's advice uh, to people in classrooms, but it's also something that I think um, industry is going to have to take on too. What, what I think is really important is to actually identify some of those big challenges that lie ahead or some of the innovation challenges and that, that it's, uh, it's that type of practical uh, demonstration or practical problem solving, I think, that is so important in, uh, uh, in, a, in, you know, in, in shaping curriculum, but also in uh, providing really good examples of how uh, innovation does make a difference. And, you know, I, I don't think um, industry or companies, uh, people in companies, it's not companies, it's people in companies have been involved enough in sharing their experiences, sharing their the problems that they're facing uh, with educators. Uh, because it's, if we can, if we can improve that, uh, I think we've got some pretty interesting opportunities to, uh, to help solve problems in the classroom and uh, and apply uh, apply curriculum to helping solve those problems and coming up with some really good ideas that maybe people in companies don't think about. And, you know, I, I've got, I mentioned the cricket uh, uh, example uh, there, but there there's some really uh, amazing challenges that are out there. Um, one is, I well, uh, talked about food. So how do we how do we, we reduce all of that waste in the food supply chain, that, that food value chain? That's a really interesting problem and it's not gonna be solved uh, overnight, but uh, gee, that's a, that would be a really interesting uh, challenge for, uh, uh, for students in classrooms to, un to undertake. Same thing with, um, with the idea about how do we re reduce emissions and maybe a, a lot of that comes from how do we do a better job ourselves and living our lives so we're not using, um, using carbon as, as much. But again, it's a big innovation uh, problem that everybody can, everybody has a stake in it, everybody's interested in it, and, uh, and it's that type of practical, practical thinking that, um, that we can maybe align some of the curriculum uh, towards and, and uh, as well as provide some some really good examples of how uh, how students could uh, could be involved in problem solving. I've got another one, a really uh, neat one. There are two initiatives that we're supporting. Uh, one is to develop new robotics in outer space to manufacture materials in uh, in outer space in a low uh, gravity atmosphere, and the other is to mine oxygen on the moon. Uh, and in both of these cases. Uh, the major company, they're both Canadian companies that are driving this, um, they don't know the answer to that. And that's what innovation is all about. Uh, so it would be really interesting to, uh, to take a look at that in the classroom and see what, uh, uh, what our students and, and, and our educators can come up with uh, in, in terms of good ideas. Because if this were easily done, and if company, if people in companies could actually solve that problem, it would have been done a long time ago. And and right now, it's out there. There's a lot of there's a lot of research that's that's there. But in terms of actual problem solving and maybe coming up with some really neat ideas, um, it's wide open. And that's so. Let's take a look at some of those some of those challenges, uh, innovation challenges, and uh, maybe taking a look at. You know some ways that other people have thought of uh, of attacking that uh, those issues, uh, but uh, but integrating that I think in the classroom uh, would be would go a long way, and 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 then also bringing in some some uh, um, some speakers, some mentors, some people from uh, uh, from industry who could be uh, experts, and I'm sure would be willing to share their share their expertise with classroom as well. All right. Speaking for Brilliant Labs, I can tell you that we're very interested in in engaging in something like that, Jay, because uh, we do have innovation challenges. We have, it's funny you mentioned about uh, space because we have the Mars rover challenge where we're actually, uh, classes across the Atlantic provinces are developing Mars rovers to do particular tasks like we see happening. Actually, Lennon, uh, who, who put in a comment just then, Lennon was talking about O2 on the moon. Lennon is a student in Nova Scotia. So, 
I, I know the interests are there um, from students all across and 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 being able to, to have some time to speak with someone in the industry like yourself, Jay, is very important and for students to hear that because as much as I, I mean, I've been an educator for 35 years and a lot of us have been saying these things to students for many years. Oh, employability skills are important. Employability skills are important. But to hear it come from somebody in the industry like yourself is, is also very important. Um, perhaps you could describe some of the resources that you have on your website that's class access that, that could, uh, could help uh, with stuff as well. Yeah, I, I, our, our website really doesn't get into uh, a, a lot of you know, sort of uh, courses or curriculum, but what it does do is, uh, first of all, you know, it talks about what advanced manufacturing is and gives some examples of, uh, of what companies are doing and what uh, technologies are in use. Uh, we have a number of really, really great change makers that we profile uh, on the um, on the website as well. And they're not only talking about what they do, but why how they why they were interested in it in the first place, and and why they really are uh, are excited about working in advanced manufacturing. So you can hear from uh, uh, from uh, uh, some some change makers, for instance, that uh, uh, who uh, one. Um, person who uh, basically uh, was an art designer who is now head of engineering at a smart textile company that is manufacturing uh, basically computer, computer, computer textile. So clothing that can read body temperature and blood pressure and body chemistry and, and can inform people if, if and in, inform the hospital if they're sick. Uh, and, and so she is uh, actually a part of the, uh, uh, the design, the product design work that's going on there. And you can hear uh, a young chap who's, who is working with moth eyeballs uh, because the lens in the moth, in moth eyeballs is so hi highly focused uh, that you can apply the same science to solar panels. So we're, we are manufacturing some of the the most powerful solar panels in the world because of his work in uh, with moth eyeballs and he's about 18. Um, we got a, a young uh, person out in British Columbia who um, uh, right after high school uh, started working in a um, uh, in a window manufacturing uh, company and now runs the entire automation system uh, for that uh, for that company, and and then has gone back to uh, to college to upgrade his uh, his skills uh, in order to do you know to do even more. So it's some really exciting uh, uh, some exciting stories around change makers on um, uh, on the site, and then uh, and then some some guidance too. Uh, and as I say, we're we're not we're not. I don't think we have the the capacity, and every everybody's study plan and, and career is going to be different. So, you know, it, apart from suggesting that you look to the college and university of your choice and, and the, the types of, of technical skills uh, or academic and professional skills that you need uh, to progress in your career, we're, su we're suggesting you know, some, some very basic guidance around what, uh, what types of skills uh, are are necessary to pursue a career uh, in manufacturing. We talked about some of those um, uh, earlier on, and then we want we want to um, uh, attract attention as well uh, and promote uh, some of the extracurricular activities or some of the activities that are going on in and best practices going on uh, in schools across the country uh, as well, like Brilliant Labs. Uh, like Skills Canada and First Robotics and a number of other organizations that are that are uh, organizing and and offering opportunities for young people to get involved with really neat applications of technology that will in the future be a part of what uh, what they can continue to do in in manufacturing and we we have a, a really interesting uh, connection with uh, with gaming as well because what we've learned through the, our site is that um, uh, the most effective channel to communicate with a number of young people uh, and to excite them about um, about advanced manufacturing and come in and look at our resources and and the information that we have on the site about advanced manufacturing is actually through our gaming channels 
uh, so uh, Twitch and EA Games. And, uh, and we've also learned that uh, a majority of students who come in through those channels are girls. And so, you know, this is, the, there, is so, there are so many assumptions uh, about what the industry is like and about what interests young people and, um, you know, and, uh, and about uh, the level of digital and technological skills that, uh, that we need. And what we're doing through this site is actually learning about what interests young people and how they see themselves as part of an advanced manufacturing career. So I, I think there's an awful lot, uh, and we're trying to share that on the site as well, an awful lot that we can share with, uh, not only with students in terms of resources and, and educating, um, uh, sort of educational resources about advanced manufacturing uh, and about people working there, but also with educators and, and with parents uh, about the opportunities that, uh, that are in the sector too. Oh, very important, uh, um, very important people to to get that information. I actually have been on your site and and seen some of your change makers. They they're very enlightening and and uh, they're excellent stories and and give students a good vision of of what they what is possible, right? And which is which is almost as important as as sometimes as, as telling them it's a good career path, showing them that it is a good career path. Um, we have an innovation challenge for students called Communities of the Future where they build and design their own communities. What would you say would be one of the more important aspect of communities in the future that should be focused on for something like a, uh, an advanced manufacturing in the future? I, I used the word future too many times there. Yeah, <laughs> well, and, and we're all about the next generation too. So, you know, I, I think our, our communities are going to be very different. And uh, when you look at, um, at urban planning, uh, you're looking at transportation systems and all of those transportation systems are going to be linked together. There are, there's going to be electronics everywhere. Uh, they're going to, it's going to be a smart, a smart system of transportation with smart cars and smart vehicles uh, that are, you know, they may not be autonomous, but they're going to be, there's, they're going to be loaded with electronics and sensors that are going to give them much more autonomy than they've had uh, right now and much more interconnections with um, uh, with the transportation infrastructure that is uh, is there. Of course, we're looking at uh, the development of non um, or sort of uh, zero emission vehicles. So uh, battery driven cars or hydrogen uh, driven vehicles uh, there. And that's going to be really important. And Canadian companies are, it's not just the car, it's the entire value chain from from the critical minerals and the processing and the development of electronics and the, and the motors and the powertrain and the materials around the car, the light weighting uh, materials uh, and the parts and then the assembly and then the sales. Um, so it's the entire value chain around that that is, so, that is so important. And of course the infrastructure because none of these cars are gonna be able to operate on the road unless we have uh, electricity and an infrastructure uh, uh, support that will enable them to operate there. And then let's look at buildings. You know, construction is just uh, another aspect of manufacturing. Uh, it's making things. And, but uh, the construction of the future is becoming more and more uh, like manufacturing. Additive is uh, uh, 3D printing uh, of, of, of uh, buildings, 3D, 3D printing of parts of buildings. Uh, is already out there, and we've got um, uh, great opportunities that, that in leading companies in Canada right now that are uh, automating the entire building process and looking at the automation of modular modular building. But uh, on top of all that, everything is going to be smart. So uh, sensors and and uh, interconnectivity with uh, with the, the broader grid and, and infrastructure and to measure climate and, and energy use and, and um, how that interacts with, with the products that we use, our appliances, our, our um, you know, the autonomous products that we have in place uh, right now that we're using. So, I mean, this, this, the communities in the, uh, and, and, and including rural, uh, communities as well, it's just going to be totally reinvented over the next 10 or 15 years. And, uh, you know, manufacturing products are going to be uh, exceptionally important in all parts of that. Uh, so it's right now we're geared to, uh, we're, we're geared to communities that, 
have existed for you know ages. Our 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 modern community is built, frankly, around uh, technology that was developed in the late 1800s, early 1900s, and and now we're we are moving forward from that, and our communities in the future are going to be built on a lot of the digital technologies that we uh, that we are developing today. And, uh, and it's going to be an exciting time, but it's just a huge opportunity for anybody who wants to work in that space. Absolutely. Uh, we had about f uh, four or five minutes left, Jay. I don't know. Um, we did have one other question, but I don't know if you had a, a closing thing you'd like to do. But the question is about, um, uh, should we see further efforts by government and industry to increase the capacity of high-speed internet access in rural communities in Canada. Like, so we're talking about trying to digitally commute. We're talking about the communities of the future and the opportunities that are gonna occur in these communities. But, but one of the barriers we see here in this province and in the Atlantic provinces generally is that high speed rural internet access to you. Is there something that we should be doing? Is there something we should be pushing for? Um, or is there something the industry can help us with? What do you, uh, how do you, what's your views on that one? Yeah, absolutely. I look, um, high speed internet or the, you know, uh, the roads and the railways of the 21st century. Um, here you can't, uh, we build an economy on, um, on physical infrastructure, uh, over the last 150 years. Uh, and that's so important. Uh, you know, nobody can, nobody can think today of what a community would look like or what the capacity would look like without modern transportation systems. Uh, same thing in the, uh, you know, with internet. If, if we are going, if as we are moving into a, a digital world, then that infrastructure is is critical uh, here. And, uh, and both industry and government have a major role to play there. Um, industry is going to react, of course, to, you know, does it make sense to do this? Does it, uh, uh, can I make money uh, from it, frankly? And, uh, but I think there are two parts of this. Uh, government uh, can make it worthwhile for industry to invest uh, in doing this. And I think that's very important. But we're also seeing today, I think, um, social enterprise uh, stepping up. And that's kind of changing the way that industry is working. And maybe when we're talking about infrastructure of the future, there's a role for, for more social enterprise as well that isn't uh, based on, on profit. Uh, an investment that has a has a huge role to play in the development of modern infrastructure uh, and uh, uh, internet infrastructure in particular, uh, where uh, where private sector uh, may not uh, may not be there right now. But a lot of that depends on regulation as well as the amount of you know incentive that uh, that is out there. So government has a at all levels has a key role to play. Well, Jay, that's almost our time. I'm just gonna preface the next thing by thanking you very much for spending some time with us today. Thank you very much for your insights, for the, for the knowledge that you're, you're giving us, for, the, for the, the understandings that you're giving us. So I'm just going to devote the last minute or so for you to give us some closing remarks and thank you very much for spending some time with us today. Yeah, thanks, John. And uh, it's been a real pleasure to be here. And I, I guess I just, uh, I just closed by saying, look, I, uh, when I was in high school, I had no idea I'd be doing this. Uh, here uh, and I've I've enjoyed my career every step along the way, but I've always seen, as I said before, every every step as a platform to to learn and to do something else, and and I think that's the type of career path that um, that anybody can have in advanced manufacturing today. This is such an important sector uh, for Canada to our ability to make things and and to make things right, to make a difference uh, when it comes to some of the big the big challenges we're facing. Shouldn't be thinking about, and I don't think. I, I don't think a lot of people are thinking about jobs in uh, the way they used to, just in terms of having a good, uh, uh, a good salary and a and secure job position. That's really important. But what is more and more important is the impact that those are those jobs are having. So just to just to close up, that's that's the type of career that uh, young people can look forward to in advanced manufacturing and and take a look at at um, and prepare yourself for that type of. Uh, of career and and you know you can start by taking a look at our website careersofthefuture.ca excellent thanks again jay thank you all for joining us today that ends uh, today's making a difference speaker series thanking jay myers from engine for joining us today and sharing his insight with us the um, 
this will be available. Uh, the recording will be available on YouTube. I think it will be available tomorrow. So uh, any of you that want to see it anymore or, or listen to it again or show some other students, it will be here. So thank you very much, Jay. And uh, we'll be talking. Great. Thanks, John. Great to be here. Take care. Thanks.